In this video, we're going to look at the equations of the circles. In other words, how do you write the equation of a circle on the coordinate plane? In our general form of this, um, it's often called center radius form instead of general form, but that's going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, and that's a lot of variables. But h comma k is going to be the center of the circle, and then the r, the part over here that's being squared, is going to be the radius of the circle. And really, if you know the center and the radius, that's all you need to know to be able to graph a circle. Now, it says determine the center and radius of the circle for the following. So one of the things you need to be able to do is you need to be able to look at the equation and identify the center and radius. So if we look right here at this first example, what we recognize from the general form of our equation is that h which is the x-coordinate of the center, it comes after the minus sign. The minus sign is not part of the x-coordinate. That h value comes after the minus sign. So as I'm looking at that first one, our center for that very first circle is going to be 3, 4. So it's kind of tricky. It's almost like your center is going to have the opposite signs of how it appears in the equation. And then over here we have a 25, and you got to be really careful because that doesn't mean the radius is 25, it means that the radius squared is 25. In other words, some value times itself gives us 25, and so the actual value there, or the actual radius, is 5. So just by looking at this equation, we can identify that the center of the circle is 3, 4, and that the radius of the circle is 5. Now let's look at our next example, and here's where we can get, we can get a little bit confused with our signs if we aren't careful. In our general form of the equation, and in example one, we had all minus signs, but here we have a plus sign. So a couple of ways to think about this. When identifying the center of the circle, you could think of it as just the opposite sign of whatever you see in the equation. So I could think, okay, I see a positive, therefore my center is negative. Or you could say, if I see plus, I know that the general form or the center radius form is written with subtraction, so I can rewrite addition with subtraction like so. So if it's x minus h, I know that that h is what comes after the minus sign. So I don't know if this uh, maybe more algebraic way of representing it makes sense to you, but either way, you need to be able to recognize that if that says plus 5, your x coordinate is going to be minus 5. And then our y-coordinate is going to be just an 8. Because once again, the k-value, that y-coordinate, is what comes after the minus sign. So if that says y minus 8, the y-coordinate is just going to be a positive 8. Once again, the radius squared is this value right here. So what number squared or what number times itself is 100? And you should be able to identify that the radius there is 10. Now let's look at our last example from this slide. We have x squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 4. Now you might be thinking, oh wow, you know, now you throw me a curveball. This doesn't look anything like the general form. But we have to think a little bit creatively because if we recognize that this right here is really just x minus 0 squared, anything minus 0 is just itself, right? That would mean that the h value or the x coordinate of the center of this circle is actually zero. And then the y-coordinate, once again, it's going to be that opposite sign of what we see here for the same reasoning that we showed in number two. If I see a y plus one, that means the y-coordinate's a negative one. And then lastly, our radius is just going to be a two because two squared is four. Let's practice a little bit more. So for this slide, I would like for you to pause the video Try to answer these three questions on your own and then hit play. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. If we look at this first example, we're asked to identify the center and the radius. And so if we remember, hopefully we took good notes on the last slide and we said, okay, here's our, our, our center radius form of a circle. And we know that the H coordinate is 3, the K coordinate is 4, and then R squared equals 16. Well, that would mean that our center is 3 comma 4, oops, because if we see the minus signs in the equation, that means that our actual coordinates are positive. And then if we know that some number squared is 16, that would mean that the radius 
is actually a 4 because 4 squared is 16. Now we're going to go the other direction. Now I'm going to give you the center and the radius, and you have to write the equation. Well, for a problem like this, we know that our equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. I need to make an, that line a little bit thick. Let me thin that up a little bit. Okay. And so then the center of your circle is going to be your hk. That means x minus negative 5 squared plus y minus negative 3 squared equals your radius squared. Oh, I don't need parentheses there. And so then if we have this minus a negative 5, hopefully you know that subtracting a negative is really the same thing as adding a positive. And here if we have minus a negative 3, hopefully you know that subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. And then you can simplify this 4.5. You very often don't have to, but um, 4.5 that 4.5 times that 4.5, and I'm kind of running under, out of room, so I'm going to write it up here. But we've got our um, x plus 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 20.25 is what that would have been. But for the most part, you're safe um, leaving it as 4.5 squared. Depends on teacher preference. Now, question 3. Given this equation, what's the center, what's the radius, and then bonus question, what's the area? Well, if we look at this first, the center of this circle, this is kind of like that, I think that third example from um, the last slide kind of had one like this. If there's not that minus H or minus K, you know that it's the same thing as subtracting zero, okay? So I kind of copied it down and rewrote this equation in a form that's more similar to our center radius form. But the center of our circle is going to be 0, 0, because we can see we're not adding or subtracting anything to x or y. So our center, and I'm not being super organized here, our center is going to be 0, 0. And then the radius of this circle is going to be 6, because 6 squared is 36. Now, what is the area? Well, the area, hopefully you remember that the area is just going to be pi r squared. So that would be pi times your radius squared. And if I left this in terms of pi, it would be 36 pi. Um, I guess we would say units squared. Now, if I wanted to graph it, the question didn't really ask you to, but I included a graph over here. We would have a center at the origin. And then we know it's got that radius of 6, right? And so if it's got that raised to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's see if I can draw this. Oh, I messed up. Let me try again. It would be this circle right here that has a center at 0, 0, and a raise at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we should be able to graph as well from the equation. Now... Practicing, let's go the other direction. If I give you the graph, can you write the equation? Well, if I look at this, it says, what is the center? And you should be able to tell just kind of by eyeballing it that the center of this circle is actually going to be right there. Um, it's going to be the ordered pair 3, 2. And then the radius is, is simple to identify as well. From the center of the circle, you say, oh, well, it's 4 units to the edge. Or you could go up 4 units or to the left 4 units. Basically, you see that that radius is going to be 4, and we can identify that just by looking at the graph. Now, what I forgot to include on this slide that I would also want you to be able to do is to write the equation in center radius form. So if I write x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals your radius squared, we're just going to substitute in what we know. We have x minus some x-coordinate and y minus some y-coordinate, and then... Our radius in this case was um, 4. So if you square 4, you get 16. And then we just fill in what we know from um, part A, which is the center of our circle. And so that's going to be 3 and 2. So this would be the answer to the question, what is the equation of the circle shown here in this graph? Now, we got one last question. It's kind of an extension. It says if, 
If this equation was translated three units left and down six units, what would be the resulting equation? Now, um, let me, oops, I'm going to back up. So I want us thinking about this, and, and um, ideally you could do it without a graph, but sometimes it's helpful to visualize it in a graph, so we'll do it over in this graph here. Uh, I'm going to start by maybe graphing what we have. So what we should be able to recognize from this equation is the center and the radius of the circle. The center is actually going to be the ordered pair negative 2, 5. You can see that the 5 is what comes after the minus sign. In other words, if you see a minus 5 in the equation, your y coordinate is going to be a positive 5. If you see a plus 2 in the equation, your x coordinate is going to be a negative 2. So that means our center is going to be negative 2, 5. And so if I plot that on the graph, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we know that our radius here, our radius is going to be 4. So our radius is 4. So from that center, I can go 4 units to the right, I can go 4 units down, I can go 4 units to the left. 4 units up would take me off the graph, so that's okay. But then let's just graph this and get a little look at our circle. So our circle is going to look thusly. Okay, that's a pretty good circle. Now, let's answer, let's answer this question. If I translate it 3 units left and down 6 units, what would, what would be the resulting equation? Now, so if I were to picture it, you know, we're going to go, we're going to go three units to the left, and then we're going to go six units down, and so that should put us right there, okay? So what's changing is the center of the circle. Our h and our k value are going to change, but it didn't say anything about changing the radius. So the right side of our equation here should stay the same. So the right side of our equation should stay as 16, but then we have our h and our k that are going to change, right? And so the question is, our new center is the ordered pair. Looks like we put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So that's the, the ordered pair, negative 5, negative 1. And from there, I should be able to substitute this new center of our circle into our equation. We have x plus 5, y plus 1. And then if I wanted to graph it, I could. And... Um, why not graph it? So our graph after the transformation would look something like that. Actually, if I want to be a little bit more accurate, it would look something like that. Okay? So if you, sh if you translate a circle around the graph, it's going to change the center of that circle, but it's not going to change the radius.